Hey guys, so I have had payroll struggles this last year in 2023. So I thought I'd come on here and tell you guys kind of like a timeline of what happened, where I went wrong in setting up my payroll, and some of my tips on what you can do better than what I did. And if you guys don't know me, my name is Morgan. My website is finepoints.biz. If you want more real life bookkeeper videos like this, definitely subscribe to my channel. I feel like I'm kind of learning along with you guys and you know bringing you along for the process i have been a bookkeeper for a long time like 10 years but that does not mean one that i know everything there is to know about bookkeeping there's always things like this that pop up and it's almost kind of embarrassing to admit that i had so many problems with my payroll last year but if you think about it it kind of makes sense because i've done a lot of payroll for clients but they were always the one to set up their payroll like the business owner is the one who needs to like set everything up and have like certain numbers numbers and put in certain things. And so this is definitely the first time as a business owner that I ever had to deal with this. Give me a thumbs up if you feel my pain and you've had these struggles as a business owner as well. So this video isn't actually a tutorial of how to set up payroll. Let me know if you'd like me to do that video in maybe like a more organized step-by-step -step fashion, but this is more of a cautionary tale and hopefully maybe a relatability tale. So maybe you can relate to things going wrong one after the other and feeling frustrated and having to get through it. I find that a lot in my bookkeeping business just because I'm the one who needs to figure everything out and solve all my own problems. So let me know in the comments if you can relate to that at all. All right, so instead of rambling too much I made this timeline for you guys. So this is to represent all of my last year. So it starts in January in the winter of 2023 and then it goes into spring, then summer and then fall and then into like November, December again of last year. So the very first thing that I started out the year by doing was changing my business structure from an LLC to an S Corp. And I've talked about this a little bit. There are some tax advantages to doing this. I have a really detailed video about payroll and what, how to pay yourself with the LLC versus the S Corp. The thumbnail looks like this if you want to check it out after this one. So I actually tried to switch to an S Corp the year before, but we had a tax preparer. This is kind of like its own story that was really great for a few years. And then he kind of ghosted us. I thought that he had switched me to an S Corp and then it turns out he had not So round two, we were like, okay, we're going to submit this. It's just like a one or two page sheet to the IRS that says I want to be taxed as an S Corp. So my new accountant filled that out for me and then we sent it into the IRS. And then he told me the state of Oregon where I live is kind of backed up. So you might not get this letter in the mail like very soon, it might take six months that says you're officially switched over. So I knew I had like a waiting period. So I just waited for a few months. And so this is my first tip. I still to this day have not received that letter. I don't know if we missed it, but I was looking out for it. I knew it was supposed to be coming. So I opened every you know letter that might be that. So so my tip is you can call and figure out if your business structure is an S Corp or an LLC. You'll probably have to Google to find the phone number. My accountant gave it to me. So I personally hate making phone calls and like doing calls like that. So I would just put it off forever. But in the very end, that is what helped me figure out that my S Corp had gone through. I just didn't get that letter that I was waiting for. So next to my timeline, as I was waiting for this S Corp paperwork to go through. I was advised to just go ahead and start running payroll because it was kind of getting antsy to start the process. So I logged into Gusto. I created, I went through their whole setup process with giving them all my business information and it will actually allow you to run a few months of payroll before you have certain things in place. And then in hindsight, I wish I had not done that but I decided I wanna get going, I'm gonna run a couple months of payroll. So I started in the spring and I ran every month for like three months, I would pay myself part of my salary. And I also started paying my contractors through Gusto. And as part of the setup process, I needed to open a tax account where you pay your taxes. It's kind of like a holding account, I think. So a lot of times this type of logistical stuff feels kind of overwhelming to me. Let me know in the comments if you get overwhelmed by stuff like that too, that you don't really understand how to do it or what it is. So as part of the setup process, Gusto, one of their services was like, you could pay a little bit of money to have someone set up this tax account for you. So I was like, great. It seemed like a reasonable price to have this person helping me. So I was communicating with this person a little bit. And then kind of what it came down to was she said that my business was still showing as an LLC. So she couldn't set up this tax thing yet. And I was like, dang, it's been like, a felt like a long time. Like, I don't know if it was six months or so, but at some point it felt kind of like a cyclical problem. Like Gusto wouldn't run payroll unless this was done. 
done, but this couldn't be done unless, you know, something else happened. So I really felt like I was hitting all these roadblocks. So I again looped in my accountant who was super helpful and he was like, just send them this paperwork that says we filed this. And he said, send them the paperwork that we sent to the IRS. That will show that you really truly are being taxed as an S corp. So I think that did help. I sent that back to the lady. I was like, no, you can create this thing now. Meanwhile, all throughout the fall, I'm getting these emails from Gusto that says your payroll is about to be blocked, which it's not their fault not everything was complete in my setup and they told me that I couldn't go on like this forever but I was like dang it it was like really frustrating because I felt like I was doing everything I possibly could to move this thing forward but Gusto was like you're running out of time so at some point I stopped running the monthly payrolls because I was like I just need to pause these until I figure all this stuff out and then after a few months of getting these warning emails from Gusto they finally did just cut me off and say you cannot do anything else until you resolve these certain things all right so then after doing some research looking at some help forums things like that, I realized I think that the biggest thing that Gusto was needing from me was a BIN, a business identification number. And there's probably directions somewhere that tells you when you start payroll, you need a BIN. But I did not know that. And that was one of my issues because I have an EIN, which is a different kind of number. And then I had this other number that I was trying, but they specifically needed a BIN. So I applied for that. I think that took a week or two to come through to me. And then really that was kind of like the last key that I needed, that Gusto needed to successfully run my payrolls. So by that time, everything was kind of in place. The state knew I was an S Corp. So kind of by the end of fall, like going into winter, I was getting things pretty much settled. I was knew I was being taxed as an S Corp. That looked, that paperwork and everything looked good. I had that tax account I needed and I had the BIN. So I needed to pay basically my whole salary for the year minus those three months that I had paid, right? So I was gonna do a really, one really big, big salary draw. And so again, I sat down with my tax guy. We talked about like the easiest, best solutions. He thought I should cancel my first, those three payrolls that I had done and then just do one for the total amount. So I was like, okay, I got a plan gonna do that. So I canceled those three payrolls. Spoiler alert, those did not end up canceling. So I clicked all the buttons in Gusto that I needed to cancel it, but then they ended up sending me an email to like confirm and just communicate with me. Are you sure you really want to cancel these three payrolls? And I, and I basically missed that email slash I didn't think that everything was writing on me replying to that one email. So that was also my bad. And it didn't help. It came in this season of struggle that I talked about in this video where we had a lot of personal stuff going on. So there were a few things I was working on on fixing for some reason some of my contractor payments were showing up twice probably because I had a mistake when I was syncing it like maybe I double synced it or I added things I'm not sure how that worked but in QuickBooks I had to delete some of my contractor payments that were doubles so I went ahead and did that that was one issue I had to fix and then I had to make sure the amount that I was pulling out for my 401k was correct so I looked into that and then the next issue that I have I feel like this is like getting so convoluted, but that's how I felt <laughs> this whole year. So the next issue is that I was getting letters from the state of Oregon saying you never paid your payroll tax for the first, I think it was Q2 and Q3 when I ran those three payrolls because they didn't have that account that the taxes needed to go in. They never paid those taxes. So the letters were kind of alarming. They're like, you owe like thousands and thousands of dollars. My accountant did assure me that that dollar amount is very inflated because they kind of guess at how much taxes you owe. And I will not owe that many taxes, therefore will not have very bad penalties to go along with it. So this does bring me about to the place that I am currently today. I decided after looking at different options, I'm not, I'm no longer gonna cancel those three payrolls because it ended up creating more problems than it was worth. So my salary is just gonna be a little bit higher this year than we thought, which is not necessarily a huge deal. I think I'll lose a little bit money in taxes because my salary is a little higher, but the salary you pay yourself is a little bit arbitrary anyway like it could range you know within like maybe twenty thousand dollars or something so i'm like oh well i just did the higher end of that that's fine all right so here's my plan for this upcoming year and how i'm going to do payroll for my business i'm at the point where i have everything lined up i'm able to run payroll i know the amounts i need to do i need know my deductions that i need to do so what i decided is i'm just going to do one large payroll 
in the middle of the year, probably. I don't know if there are drawbacks to this or if it's like not recommended. Let me know in the comments if you have any opinions. Basically, I'm just gonna let my bank account, you know, accrue money until I have enough to cover my payroll, my salary, and then I'm gonna just run it once. And then I feel like it'll just be like more clear in my mind. I just feel that that will be the simplest solution for me. I'll just have to do it once, think about it once. My W2 will just have one big number on it. And the clear con to this is cash flow, right? So if you're running a business with multiple employees, you probably can't afford to do that because, well, plus people want to get paid every month. But it is gonna look weird on my monthly profit and losses because like in September or something, whenever I run that one payroll, that's gonna be a negative month. But my accountant is fine with that and I feel like that's gonna be the easiest for me. So I will let you guys know this year how that goes for paying myself with an S Corp. Thank you guys so much if you stay to the end and come with me along this journey. I'm not sure if it was tedious to hear or stressful or what, or if it was helpful. But let me know in the comments and I will see you again next week with another video. Thanks.